Uh, I'm David Carger, and uh, I work at the MIT Computer Science Department in the Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory. Excellent. Wow. And so, what made you, as a, as really a tech guy, want to come to more of a, a of this of this experiment? So it's been a sort of slow evolution. I actually started as a math guy, a theoretical computer scientist, and uh, slowly moved through various fields of computer science, uh, driven by this interest in how we work with information, mm -hmm. um, how we manage it, how we find it, how we organize it, and so forth. Um, and uh, that took me into the domain of open data, uh, looking at tools to let people define their own uh, data representations and ways of visualizing data, ways for people to share data and such. Um, then on sort of another angle, I started thinking about social information management and how people communicate information to each other um, and understand information that's coming from other people. Um, this uh, led me to doing some work in uh, online education. We've got a sort of discussion for a discussion tool for for classrooms uh, where we're studying some of that stuff. Um, and so, you know, as as I also have sort of I think a natural. Uh, person's interest in our government and seeing it function well and um, uh, serve us well. And so when you put all of those things together, thinking about the role of data, uh, the role of people sharing information, um, and you know the importance of, of government, it's pretty na natural for me to end up at a place like this. Mm -hmm. And so what were some of the, or rather, let's start, let's keep on, on your work that you're doing. What are some of the solutions that you're exploring now, so like some of the specific projects? Sure. So um, I'll, I'll mention one in the sort of data space and one in the discussion space. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the data space, we've been working for, for over a decade now on uh, sort of pursuing the idea that people ought to be able to define their own way of interacting with data. Uh, sort of historically, uh, it's all been about developers creating applications that manage a certain kind of data and manage that data a certain way. And we always run into problems with people who want to do something different with that data or combine that data with a different kind of data or look at that data in a different way than the developer thought they would want to look at it. Uh, and so those, those rigid applications really uh, interfere with people managing information instead of supporting them in managing information. They constrain what they can do. So we've been pursuing this idea of being much more focused on the data than on the application and saying, well, what, what's really underlying everything is this data that people want to work with. And depending on what they want to do at a particular moment, they may want to look at the data this way. They may want to look at the data that way. They may want to look at this data combined with this data, or they may want to look only at this particular subset of the data. Um, and I'm convinced that it is possible to build tools that let people do this. That is, they're not going to be restricted to the tools that developers decided this is the data you're going to look at, but instead they are going to have a lot more control over what is the data, what is its schema, how is it visualized, how is it navigated, putting a lot more of that into the control of the end user. And, that, and that's interesting because uh, at what point uh, would those tools kind of come in? Because I know I've tried to I've tried to download some of these data sets that get released, right? And yes. it's just like, wow, this is going to be. I feel like I'm looking at the Matrix right now. Yes, you yes. Know? Or maybe not the Matrix, but Excel, right? So, right. so Excel like is the, is Excel. the world's database, right? Yeah. So it's, it's not actually a database, but it's what everybody uses it as a database because we have these rows and columns, right? And rows and columns work kind of well for data. Uh, but they're a big step away from the sort of applications that exist to work with a specific kind of data, right? You've got your address book, you've got your accounting software, um, you've got your um, email program. You, uh, each of them is a part, there's a certain kind of schema to that data, which allows a developer to then make a purpose-built interface uh, that shows you things the right way for that particular task. Um, what we've uh, observed, and I think proven out with some of our research, is that there aren't actually that many, all applications are basically the same, mm -hmm. right? They sort of lay out you know, these, these rectangles, and inside of the rectangles there are these other rectangles, and inside of those rectangles there's text and little images and so on and so forth. And so um, we don't think it should take a developer to create a new one for a new task. Mm -hmm. So if I suddenly decide that I'm interested in 
ocarinas and I want an ocarina management application, um, I should be able to just throw one together by kind of dragging together the right pieces, saying, well, I want to look at this aspect of an ocarina, I want to look at that aspect, I want to be able to filter it this way, I want to be able to sort it that way, and have something that at the end looks more like an application. Uh, a traditional application or a traditional website um, than this sort of rectangle, the, the, the matrix, uh, the literal matrix of an Excel spreadsheet. Because the Excel spreadsheet is very general, but it doesn't give you the, the interactions that you find natural for working with a particular kind of data. So then <clears throat> what are some of the insights then that relate to that that you kind of uh, drew on or gathered while you were here at the experiment? Well, so that is a project that, I mean, I've been thinking about that in line with open data f uh, f uh, through data.gov, right? Mm -hmm. So data.gov is this really um, ambitious project to uh, push data out of government. Uh, but one of the things that always worries me is that it doesn't help to push it out if there's nobody there who can then receive it and do something with it. Right? And so you're getting all of these data sets which don't have applications, right? You know, the mortality rates in hospitals, right? There's not an application for that. So, how is somebody going to take that data and look at it and uh, do a task with it or make some decisions from it? There has to be a way to design uh, or, or create the tool that will let them have the appropriate interactions. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, we've been, so for example, we've created this uh, framework called Exhibit, which is a, uh, the notion is that just like you create web pages, you should be able to create interactive data web pages. So right now in HTML documents, you create, you know, divs and spans and paragraphs and um, lists. These are sort of the, the primitives of a document in HTML. We've extended that vocabulary with primitives like maps and timelines, um, sortable lists, uh, grids of images, as just other things that you can throw into your document. And so the idea is that you take a doc, you, you, you create a document by taking a data set and putting that in your document, and then using these primitive data elements to create a web page. But it, it's an interactive web page, which gives you the kinds of things that we're at this point quite used to on the web, like faceted browsing as a way to filter uh, a data set that you're looking at. So like when you go to Amazon and you want to filter by price um, or by author, you get these little things in the side margins. So um, all of these things can be described by a very simple vocabulary. Once they're described by a very, very, very simple vocabulary, you can add them to a document editor. So you don't have to program an application. You just need to edit a document which includes some of these interactive elements. And, what you, and now you have something that can really let you interact with your data. So um, this is actually, this framework has actually been used with data.gov. So when you talk to Jim Hendler, he can tell you a little bit about that. But um, it's a very quick way to throw together visualizations on top of some of the data sets that are coming out of data.gov and, and let you interact with them. Excellent. And so, um, okay, so you had your experience in the session and you get, gathered uh, a bunch of stuff. This was experiment one, right? Yes. What would you consider, or what would you like to see in experiment two, right? All the experiments, we just try to drill down so that we can get a more specific solution. Yes. What would you like to see in experiment two to drill down for that? Well, so the experiment, I don't know if this is answering your question exactly and tell me if it's not, but the, the experiment, or the thing that has uh, frustrated my ambitions to sort of make a contribution in this space um, is the, uh, the gap between sort of the tool providers like us, we can build things, um, and the people who have the problem, mm -hmm. right? Who are the people in government, for example. So, um, uh, you know, what, what really drew me down here was the uh, potential to sort of bring us together or to, to create channels which would allow us to communicate in the future so that, um, I can, I can go to a government, a government uh, uh, official or a, a politician or something and say, what do you need? What are the things that would allow you to do your job better in terms of tools and data? Because I think that we need that insight, right? They, they, have, they have the nails, we have the hammers, and, uh, but they need to tell us about the nails so that we can create the, the proper hammers. And so creating that, that interdisciplinary connection um, from, acad from computer scientists to, to government people, from theoreticians or academics to practitioners, I think that's really essential for defining the right problems to solve. Excellent. 
Oh, David, I think that's it for us. Thank okay. you so much. I really appreciate your time.